When the custom post type has been added to the website, you'll notice on the left hand side it will be in place. In this example, it's called our projects, together with a red icon to the left and also some options to link through to all projects, add new and project categories. If we take a look at a brand new custom post type right now for projects, you'll notice that it is fairly blank. We've only got a title field at the top here where we can add some content for the title of the project together with fields for project categories and the ability to add a featured image. Now this custom post type has also got some taxonomies in place and these taxonomies are project categories. The custom post type is to be associated with a construction company's projects. Therefore, they need categories which will split those projects up into appropriate groups. Here we have commercial, energy saving, fit out, renovations, and residential. So in order to add other fields to this custom post type so that we can add more data to the post type and therefore show relevant information on the front end of the site, we need some fields below in this gray area. To do so, we'd add a plugin and that plugin is advanced custom fields. And this gives you plenty of options to add different types of fields, including very basic text fields where you add three or four words potentially, or maybe text areas where you add paragraphs of text to more complex fields such as image galleries and repeater fields where you essentially repeat lots of different fields in a particular structure. So there are plenty of things that you can do with advanced custom fields and build a more comprehensive custom post type with data which can be shown in the front end of the site. Now once this plugin is installed, the advanced custom fields plugin, on the left hand side of the administration dashboard you'll notice an option called custom fields. And the first thing you need to do is click on add new. You'll be presented with the following screen and custom fields will be added to groups. Now each group I would suggest is an area on the front end of the website. So you want to group those fields together. And in this example, we're going to group all of the project details fields together. And these fields will be a number of different text fields and also a date picker field. So first of all, we'd add a new field group and we're going to call this project details. Once you've done that, you can then click on add field to start building all the different fields that will be within the group project details. But before we do that, we need to take a look at the options that are below. And primarily the most important one you need to set up in the first instance is the location and therefore the rules which determine where these fields will be shown. You can add multiple rules so it doesn't have to be one particular post type. These fields can be shown on normal posts and pages as well as the custom post type. But in this example, we're going to change posts to our project so that any of these fields that we create here will be shown on this custom post type in this gray area under here. If we scroll down, you'll notice some other particular settings that may be relevant. In this example, I'm going to leave the vast majority of these as they are. There are some useful settings that you may wish to change, including the order of these fields when they are shown in the custom post type here. You may also wish to add a description for the field group and also check some boxes for different kinds of standard fields that you may wish to show in the custom post type. But at this stage and this example, we're going to leave these settings as they are and then progress to adding the fields. So we click on this blue button here to add field. The first thing you need to add is the field label and this field is going to be a text field and it's going to be called client. So it'll be associated with the client which the construction company has completed a project for. So we'll fill in these details and then go through exactly what it means after they've been filled in. So we filled in the appropriate details for this field and as I said, it's called client. The field name will be populated with the information that you add in the field label. You can choose the field type that you like by clicking on this drop down. And the field we need is text. There are plenty of other fields that are available inside the advanced custom fields plugin. You can scroll down and they're structured into basic fields, content fields, choice fields, relational fields, jQuery fields, and also layout fields. But in this instance, we're going to choose 
text. For further guidance on exactly what all of these fields do, please check out a further video from WordPress Tips. You'll notice in the instructions field some guidance on exactly what the user needs to do when filling in this field. So it simply asks them to add the client name. The next option is required and typically I'd suggest that all fields are a required field. Otherwise, I'd suggest why bother having the fields on the custom post type in the first place. Now, if the field is required, it means that when the user adds data to the custom post type here, they won't be able to publish it without adding appropriate information in the field. So I feel it's a good idea to add a yes for required. The placeholder text is very similar to instructions, but in this instance, this text will go inside the field box itself so you can give the user further instructions on exactly what needs to go in that field. The prepend is information that you'll see before the field, and this will be in a, a gray box if you like. The other setting which I feel is necessary for a text field is to add a character limit. And here we've added 40, and this stops the user who's adding data to the custom post type here from adding too much information. Now, of course, if there was no character limit, they could add 10 words to a text field, and then that would display untidily on the front end of the website. And therein lies the benefit of having a custom post type. You can set up fields and control measures to ensure that whoever adds data in the back end of WordPress does so in an effective way and doesn't add inappropriate information. And each of the fields that you can select in the drop down will give you similar options to control the way in which that field is used in the back end of WordPress. Once you've added all of the appropriate information for the field, you can then progress to adding the other fields by clicking on this button here. In this example, we're going to add a variety of different text fields for the project details group, as I said earlier. And in this group, there will be fields for location, architect, completion date, and also the contract value. So obviously, details that will be associated with a construction project. Now to save time, we're going to add those fields and show you what they all look like when they're inside the group called project details. We've also added two other groups called project description and project images. And both of those two other groups have one field within them. Now to access the field groups that you have set up, you can go to custom fields on the left hand side of WordPress and click on field groups to view this page. So let's take a look at exactly what the project details now look like. You'll notice that we have five fields in place called client, location, architect, completion date, and contract value. Now, four of these fields are text fields, therefore very basic fields where you add a few words in a box, exactly like you're doing with the fields group at the top here called project details. The only different one is completion date. And if we click on edit to view exactly what that looks like, it's very similar with instructions for the field, as well as the ability to check required. And you can choose the display format for the date, the return format, and also when the week starts. So each of the fields in the advanced custom fields plugin do offer very similar options when you're setting up the field. But for specific fields, you'll find options which are more applicable to them. So obviously in this example with date, you need to choose things like the display format, return format, and so on. If we now take a look at the other field groups which we've added, you'll notice that we've got project description. And if we click on edit, we can assess exactly which fields are associated with that group. So here you'll see a field called description. And this is a WYSIWYG field. So the WYSIWYG editor is the area where you add content in WordPress posts and pages. And with the advanced custom fields plugin, you can choose a WYSIWYG editor. And here you'll have options to obviously choose whether it is required or not. You can choose to add the tabs visual and text, visual only, or perhaps just text. You're therefore deciding how much control you want the user to have when they're filling in the post. You can also choose to show the full toolbar or indeed just the basic information. 
You need to be careful when you use the WYSIWYG editor in the advanced custom fields plugin because ultimately you're giving the user more control and capabilities when completing the custom post type. So it may be more applicable in some circumstances to use a text area which only allows the user to add paragraphs of text and not more formatting options which are typically available with a WYSIWYG editor. So there you have the description field and the final group which we have available is called project images and if we click on edit for that you'll notice that this is a gallery field type if we click on edit and then scroll down you'll see the usual information is in place including some instructions to only use a particular sized image the field is required you can choose a minimum selection of images in this example it's four and a maximum of eight this obviously ensures that the data that's shown on the front end is tidy and you have an appropriate number of images uploaded. You can choose the preview size as full, thumbnail, medium or large. You may wish to limit the upload of images from the posts itself by checking upload to post or indeed choosing images which are within the library itself. Now with this field I'd go a step further and add minimum width height and size in these fields as shown here and also a maximum width height and file size and this is useful because it gives even more control measures to the person adding data to the custom post type so typically when you're adding data in the back end of wordpress it might not be someone who knows everything about wordpress and exactly how it works websites and so on and so forth so you want to limit their capabilities so that they only do the right things when adding data in the back end of WordPress. So adding a minimum width and height as well as a file size stops them from adding images which are poor resolution and by adding maximum width, height and file size stops them from adding files which are too big and therefore cause problems with the speed of the website. You can also list the file types in this field so you might want to have JPEG and also PNG so you can do that and of course you can utilize the conditional logic and wrapper attributes I won't go into detail and exactly what these do because they're slightly more complicated but in the basic premise of using the advanced custom fields plugin it's all about adding specific settings in the back end here before you then go and view those fields in the actual post type itself so with these field groups in place, project description, project details, and project images, we have some fields ready, which can then be displayed on the post type itself. So let's now take a look at exactly what the post type will look like with these fields in place. These field groups are set up to appear on the custom post type, our projects. So if we were to hover over our projects and then click on add new, will then see this screen and it is different from the previous setup for this post type where we only saw the title for the new project the categories on the right hand side and featured image now you'll notice that the fields for project details are in place including client location architect completion date and contract value obviously for each of these fields you add data appropriate to the name of the client the location of the project and so on. If you scroll down, you'll notice the field for project description and that is a WYSIWYG area. So you simply add text in the box as shown here. Obviously with the WYSIWYG editor, you can do more formatting, add images, underline content, bold content and so on. All the same things that you can do with a WYSIWYG editor in WordPress. Scroll down and you'll have the project images field, which is a gallery field. And of course, all you do here is click on add to gallery and select the images which are appropriate for this gallery. Once you've added data to all of these fields and you've got some images, some information for the project description and the fields for project details are completed, as well as the title for the project, project categories and a featured image. The post can obviously be published in the same way that you would with a normal post and page in WordPress. Then the details of this post need to be displayed on the front end. To do so requires some styling using CSS and the data needs to be pulled from the database using PHP. 
And you could argue that this is perhaps the most complex part of the custom post type process and will require some support if you are not a developer and therefore aware of how to use CSS and PHP. Check out further videos from WordPress tips on how you actually do that so that you can display all of this content in an appropriate and effective way on the front end of the website.